right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's the man with the plan. I ain't Clark Kent, but some of the ladies do call me Superman. It's your boy, Big Cali, and this is Big Cali World, man. Episode three, I think this is what it is. Yeah, I had to make sure it's been a crazy weekend so far. So anyway, here, man, well, I'm feeling good, feeling great as usual, and I'm bringing to you a very special guest. But before I even introduce the guest, you know, we got Cast One on the ones and twos. Shout out Cast One. We're here at Element Recording Studios, Productive Culture. You know peace, what this is. Peace, peace, peace. <laughs> you know what it is, man. Go on to place with slaps, man. We're going to do something real wavy, keep it moving and grooving. And I have a very special guest today. Uh, let's see. How can I start this? Producer, rapper, artist. I shouldn't just say rapper. You do a lot of different kind of music, man. I just see you do some melodic <laughs> shit. You done made me cry on the track. <laughs> Uh, author, yes, philanthropist, yeah, life coach. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Curtis <laughs> King's in the motherfucking building, man. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know what this is, man. For sure, bro. Long time coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been in the cave, so if I come out, you I, know, for somebody special. I told I you on the way in here. I was like, you know, I got love for you. So, and, and to be on episode three is an honor. So I appreciate you. I appreciate. Inviting. It. I like you on the Holy Trinity episode, the three. Look, it's, it's complete for Hello. a reason. Hello, that's for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe in no coincidences. I don't either. So definitely, either. man. You, you tell me you were just coming from San Diego. San Diego, yeah, yeah. So it's a bit of a commute, but uh, when you hit me up to do this, it's a no-brainer. Um, it's just, uh, I, you know, I always feel like your energy is, is is something that anytime we've had conversations in private, <laughs> it's been times where I'm like, man, I wish we had a recorder on. Tr just to go me. revisit those. Bro, I <laughs> didn't call you in some times where I was like, bro, I need some answers. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I just yeah, don't know. You always yeah. been like, an older brother, big, like yeah, a like a real that. figure to me. You know, right, you, right. Noah, a right. lot of y'all always, I always come, I have my I have my little angels right. that I call them. I just call them like, hey, bro, <laughs> shit's fucking up right now. Yeah, I, what's I, going hey, on? Hey, it be like that sometimes, but I think I think what's most important is that um, we we know that when we come to you, the energy's going to always be the same. I've right. never, I've never... I don't know if I've ever seen you. Or, I don't know you have bad days. I've never, oh, I've never seen me. you on a bad day. Like Man. I've never, like even on a day that I thought was bad, <laughs> and you was like, it was a bad day today. You smiled. <laughs> so, so I think your energy is something that we all can learn from, just yeah. in terms of being, uh, in terms of being uh, really resilient through through whatever's going on, and 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 knowing that, you know, you got to show up, and when it's your time to do a job, you do your job every time. Man, talk about it, man. I yeah. think that's have. That's half the battle of even making it in the world. Like, fuck the industry. Yeah, yeah, just everyday yeah, life yeah. is just getting up. It ain't, like, what did Martin Luther King say? It's not how you take it, but how you recover from it or some shit like All that. Right, I, I, I'm, a little, I'm a little wavy already. <laughs> I know this nigga's going to hear it. I'm like, God damn it, see, you are just about to make a point. Fuck. I tried, man. I ain't you're good, got that. Good. But no, nah, man, um, the new single that I heard from you, just okay. to start off, we're going to go right in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve Jobs, man, that yeah. I heard okay. from you. That's the last one. That's yeah. the last one. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to do a little no, you research. You good, you good, you I had good. to do a little research, and I was um, like, this nigga Curtis King is coming out with some shit. Something different, yeah. You it's always like, something different, don't Bro, this is some yeah. festival shit. Yeah, you yeah, trying to yeah. go big with this? This is like a big sound. Yeah, well, I mean, I think for the first time, I've been, I've, I've given myself the uh, permission to just cook and not worry about what this has to be for. It don't got to be a single. It doesn't have to be for an album. I don't have to worry about this being something that's gonna put anybody on. It's just really get in that studio with Oh Gosh Leotis. Let shout him out, do. Oh Gosh, let yeah, shout out to him because without him, I mean, he's engineering and and making the music for this and so without him a lot of these ideas really just sit inside my head or i'm baking up rough drafts if i'm making it myself so Damn. to have somebody that you look at and you're like i'm gonna take it 200 2000 percent whatever it's 2000 percent whenever it's time to work make some music right. to have somebody on his end that you know is gonna take it there and even more what was that push process like what did he just hit you like all right curtis it's time man no, you out here because we we know you got the new family right first right, off congratulations right. for Thank that you so much Thank man that's so been much. a blessing that we're gonna talk blessing. about that a little bit later too. Bit. people want to know where i've been i've been with yeah. them i've been with them but uh with oh gosh man you know it was, it's kind of part of the reason too i moved out so far because right everybody knows me from being an ie i moved out to i wanted to move out to somewhere where you can't just pull up on somebody 
Man, talk to right? me. Right? Like, if you come out there, you came to visit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I moved oh, to Hemet. I was in the area. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was driving from Moval, and I, I happened to be in Texas. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I was going to pull, you can't pull up. Like, Diego's one of them things where you make a commitment, and I think that the people that are willing to make a commitment, the relationships are richer. Right. Right? And, and, and it, people kind of filter themselves out, the ones that just kind of want to come and, you know, use you for what they can use you for. Everybody who's come out there, yeah. including oh gosh, has been like those little rich relationships and so he was just pulling up on me like i'm like bro can i shoot you some gas money or something like we already cutting the splits on the songs yeah but i was like can i you know what can i do he's like bro let's just cook he's like you told me that you because i took a long hiatus yeah right and how long of a hiatus would you say you took about two years two years i but i needed the two years really first of all to get life back in order because uh a lot of shit changed a lot of things went kind of left and right and uh you know just life in general and and really what was my purpose within being in the IE, especially if I'm not an artist and if I'm not really actively pushing my beats for anywhere except for Curtis King Beats. At the time, it was like, well, I'm doing YouTube. Mm -hmm. YouTube is mobile, so why right. am I here? Right. And so, um, you know, I'm not really doing shows. I said, you know what? I want to move. Uh, I want to move closer to someone that reminds me of my childhood. And Diego was that. My grandparents stayed out there. God rest they, both of their souls. But they stayed out there, and it was really nostalgic to be out there. But then also, too, was a new start for my wife. Is and that where you were from? My son. Uh, no, no, no. My family. My family Family's is from, from there. Diego. My family's okay. from there. But to be out there and to just be able to, like, look around and then get, you know how you get, you get to, like, your grandparents' house and they got smells around there that just remind you Man, of your childhood. talk to me. I don't know what it is about the houses in Diego, but that house has the same type of smells and Man. it's eerie. But it's for me, it's good because I feel like no matter what you do in life, you're gonna always come back home. Home, home doesn't always have to be a destination though. Home could be a, a, a mindset that maybe you thought at the time was, oh, that shit's too basic. I gotta go out in the world and do something amazing and, right. and, and, and be somebody else. But home, you're gonna always return home some way. Even when it comes to like my latest placement as a producer, uh, with the Justin Timberlake commercial, I was Levi's. about to bring that right. up, man. Shout that out, man. That's Which, big. Wait, now hold on, hold on. Yeah, I know yeah, you yeah, want to yeah, move yeah. fast. I, I was gonna say one thing about yeah. that is that that wasn't off of a trap beat or any of the stuff that I've been known to do in the last few years. Mm. What was it off of? Soul sample. It went home. right back home. So that's what I started off with. So, but yeah, that that situation was beautiful because you know I I don't go out looking for these opportunities no more. Like anything that anything that you see that comes out that looks like. I guess an attempt at at, at leveling up or, or clouting up. I'm just I just the 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 thumbs up and the and the one hundreds and the oh that's dope don't do anything for me, especially right. on social media. I'm not doing this right. for for any of that kind of uh any kind of love. As long as my inner circle was like, I'm proud of you, keep it going. Right. That's, and really myself, that's the biggest thing. Right. Um and so when those things pop up, it's almost like, damn, well, I guess I gotta promote this, don't I? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, not that I'm not proud of it, but it's like I'd rather get back. I'm, 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 I'm really, really, uh, 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 you know, a lineage of that Mamba mentality, and that I want to go to work. Like, the, like the championship, the feeling of the championship lasts a day, maybe the parade, maybe the night of. Yeah. But then training camp and the summer comes right there, and you got to get back to work and defend what you got so going. So you the nigga in the lab after the Grammys. I'm right back there. <laughs> like what? Like like. Like if we can't if we came for just the celebration, this shit the grind was cheap. This shit was cheap. You know, Why do we do this? You know it, it, it can't be just for the celebration. You know. Well, you were saying we were talking about. I was talking about that uh, with my boy Marshall on the way up here. Yeah. We're talking about different rappers and people that we've seen in the Inland Empire. Right. And that they had the they have a platform. Right. And they're right. famous, but they did it for. Bitches, they did it for drugs. Wrong they did reasons. it for, yeah. and they really like. You could tell they wanted it just for that, and it yeah. wasn't for like trying to push the ecosystem further. Right. It wasn't trying right. to like put their brother on. It wasn't really right. trying to put their, you know, their family on. It wasn't. It was really like I want to be on. Yeah. I want to be the biggest person possible. How can I get the end? Even in my own personal life, right. I was even a bit by that. Yeah. When I first left and I went to Atlanta. We all are, for sure. Yeah, I went to oh, Atlanta, you was in Atlanta school. So I know you got you know, I know yeah. you got bit by that bug. You know, out I got bit yeah. out there because I was from California. Yeah. And I'm a big <laughs> nigga from California. You dig me? I'm already knowing. And it's I'm going, out yeah. there and I'm chilling. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting females before in California. Yeah. yeah. But getting it in, in the South. There's something different about the Cali energy. They feel it's that. It's a whole They different. feel that. They like, oh, you Cali, Cali. They can something, tell the way I'm different. talking. I'm over there saying, yeah, for sure. We about to hit the function <laughs> later. Like, what's up? They like, oh. what are you talking? Oh, function. Okay. So anyway, 
<laughs> Long story short, because I can yeah. go into that for a minute, right. man. <laughs> Long story short, that we were talking, it was like, I got bit by it, though. Right. Because even throughout that process, I was still working in a radio station. Sure. But it wasn't like, nothing was like pushing further right. than it needed to. Right. It was always like, it will reach a point. <laughs> Right, and then I'll be like, "Wait a minute, why shit just never works out?" Right, well, why I, isn't you know it what? not working out? It's crazy because I feel like I, I've been in a very similar situation, and what I found was that whenever, whenever, because you know, life those things at you, and you look at it and you're like, "Okay, I'm being tested," yeah. but then you get tested so many times that you got to start asking the question like. Is this a test or is this me getting my ass whooped for doing the same wrong things Whoa. over and over and over and Whoa. over again? And if you're not able to recognize that, some people will make the same mistakes from 20 all the way to 60. I think they call that insanity. Right. It is insanity. It, 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 it is, is insanity. insanity. But doing it's a lot the same of, thing twice, expecting same, a different result. But it's a lot of, AA. well, it's a lot of, it's, it's a, it, you know, it's a lot of insane people out here. I'll tell you that right Hello. now. Because, uh, <laughs> but I think that's when you start to realize all of the vanity statistics, all of the, the 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 props that sort of mean something but don't really mean something in the in the the long haul, you start to realize that you're not walking in purpose. When you're walking in purpose, don't nobody gotta show up to pat you on the back and say you're doing good work. You just do the work because what you, <laughs> it's almost like it's almost you get to the point where it's like, well, what else am I supposed to do? Yeah. This is my purpose, and so how'd if, you find your purpose, and what was your process like to even go through that? Because I'm gonna tell you exactly how I did it. I had to get the fuck away <laughs> from everything Damn. because you know what we total get we exile get total exile total get myself from at first that exile was um was in uh Moval right and and rightfully so like I had went through through uh, a, a breakup and and a lot of folks were you know kind of aware of everything going on right. too much stuff well, I wish I could take some of that stuff away but right. um aware of a lot of stuff and so it made me get to a point where it was like all right, same thing with any breakup. You got one or two choices. You either gonna find somebody else's life to fuck up because everybody has a say in every relationship. Has, 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 has a has a, a a part to blame in every relationship. Of course. You either gonna fuck up somebody else's life or you gonna get yours in order so that you can attract the right people. Talk to me. Uh, or the right person, I should say. And right. so I got to a point where I got up to Redlands and I was like, don't nobody out here look like me. Not at least the, the folks I didn't seen since I was doing, you know, the Common Grounds and all the different shows in the IE. Yeah. And, um... I was seeing a lot of uh, make Make America Great Again hats around, ah! me, and I wasn't used to that. And I'm I was like, seen that. I was looking around like, let me tell you this quick story. This, this is gonna tell you about Redlands. Okay, <laughs> I was so paranoid being out there, and and some some things did happen while I was out there, right? Because right. I mean, they they, you know, even when you take a glance at me, you don't know if I'm Puerto Rican, if I'm black, or if I'm, you don't know what I am, right? But. I was driving down, I forget I what street that you is. Like I'm, you look, I'm gonna just tell it like it is. Talk I'm driving down, I'm driving, I guess some dude cut me off. It's a bunch of just like pseudo kind of racist stuff. That's not even what I'm talking about. I pulled up on the Walgreens and um, it's like after I had my son, uh, my, my wife had my son or whatnot. Yeah. Shit, kick my ass saying that. After my wife had my son, <laughs> uh, and I was pulling out the driveway, and it was Father's Day. Mm. And it was like, you know, this white dude on the Harley, and, and he, he had the thick mustache, and he was looking like some of the folks we've seen at, at, the, at the. No, <laughs> that and like, some of the folks we've seen at the, at, the, at the rally beating up on people. So oh, yeah. It was like right after that happened. And oh, I was looking yeah. at him, and I was like, uh oh. And he Dirty. was like, he was like, hey. And I said, what's going on? He said, happy Father's Day. And I was like, oh, happy Father's Day. Then I got in the car and that, that for a split second, I had paranoia like, you just saying I'm a dad because I'm black? Like, what are you like, 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 you just trying to say like, you just, you just expect I got kids because I'm black. And then I thought to myself, I was like, I was like, whatever. And I started like pulling out, kind of looking a little, a, little, a little bit irritated, look yeah. back in the back seat. Guess, guess what's back there? What? The car seat. <laughs> hey, man. See, we too. <laughs> Sometimes we be too hypersensitive ready. and too ready We're for ready. everything. It's the internet. But I'm, I'm, I'm straying away. I say this to say I had to get out in environments that were uncomfortable, environments that were things that I wasn't used to. Right. Like, what I didn't realize for the last 30 odd years of my life, I have always lived in neighborhoods, whether it was Carson, whether it was Long Beach, whether it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Rialto, San Bernardino, places where it was to your best, it was your best decision to always be aware of your surroundings, mm. right? Like you have to like almost like almost have your fists ready and clenched because right. you just never know what this person down the alley is on or you never know like you you, you pumping gas. You just, you just have this anxiety and um, I didn't realize I had been clenching my teeth and tightening up my fists to defend right. myself for something that inevitably, you know, 
I guess sometimes it was a reason. To, what was to, the to reason? What, what made you be so like like paranoid about that? I think we all have from? it and don't realize we have that anxiety. I think right. a lot of it is trauma. I think a lot of it is trauma from being in neighborhoods where things that are not normal to people that live out in the place I live now in San Diego, like they yeah. up here driving Tesla, they ain't worried about none of that stuff. Um, <laughs> Living that good life was. Yeah, they, they like, Sand- sandals to, uh, tra- to uh, Whole Foods. San Diego. They San ain't worried Diego. about none of that shit, right? <laughs> like when, when you say stuff like, you know, ah, oh, man, I'm wearing too much red today. They like, why not? It's a great color. <laughs> it's vibrant. Hey, I can't it's lie. A color, I, it's a color of authority. Like, I love San Diego. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm gonna be real. Just going and it, to and visit it has its just... pockets. It oh, has its pockets me. for sure. Oh, but trust me. We ain't even gonna talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, yeah. like, but, but that's what I'm saying is that that anxiety of, and you don't even, you know, we don't identify it as anxiety. We look at it as just being street smart and aware. And mm. so we walk around with this, not knowing that we holding on to some level of anxiety. And it took me getting out to where. I was driving like away from my house and I was driving down the street and I seen a police car pull up and that's already anxiety for any black man in, of the, course. in, in America, especially. And so I pulled, I see him pull up on the side of me and then he's slowing down and I'm like trying to go, fall, you know, drive straight. And then I look to my right cause he's like car to car with me and it's like no cars ahead of us. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh shit, here we go. Do I got my license <laughs> registration? I got my insurance. And then I, I, I looked at him, he said, he waved at me and then sped off. I was like, Either this is get out, <laughs> or, yeah. uh, or or I can finally un- and, and you know what I did? I just unclenched my fist. I unclenched my uh, my my anxiety, and I, I for the first time I feel like I breathed. And so I I could not find my purpose in the environments that I was in because right. it was too many things that I was focused on. It was too many things that were triggering my anxiety. It's almost like it's almost like trying to 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 make a wound heal but you right. keep opening up the band-aid and stabbing it that's what it Ooh. felt like it was Sick. so i got to a place where it was like a lot of things needed to just heal and a lot of the healing didn't require like i didn't have to go to no acupuncture i had to go to like to no therapist and i want to, i want to go to therapy i actually want to go to therapy but i needed peace to make sense of the last so odd years of my life and my right. career when i got that peace the cheat code started coming in. And so I, I, I was led to this uh, list from uh, one of these, uh, you know, uh, self-help speakers. And he said, three things you need to know to align with your purpose. The first right. thing is what comes easy to you, but more difficult for other people. We all got something that comes super easy to us. Maybe it's your ability to to just off the top, yeah. have the personality yeah. speak and, and be able to move a crowd. Whatever the ability is that most people don't have, that's aligned with your purpose. The second thing is what would you do and do it for free? Because if whatever that is, you got to love it to some kind of degree to do it for free. I think that's the point where I'm at right now in my life. I just started realizing what is my purpose and what I want to do, especially with doing these shows. Right. Because I was crazy. We're talking about this. I know God, the way God works and all this is is because I was talking with Marshall about this. Driving up here, I was saying, you have to figure out really what you want. And then as soon as you figure that out, God throws you the most lobs. Things just start working out for no reason. That's why as soon as you came in, you were giving like, and trust me, I know you were genuine. You're saying, yo, congratulations on everything. And I was saying like, bro, it is not all me, bro. I'm so like, I was like, bro, it's the team. I'm explaining it to you. But see, even as you explain it, I don't think you, maybe you do realize that that's still a testament to your character is the fact that you don't, you don't absorb all of that and say, yeah, well, I, I, you know, I, I, shit, I mean, it's about time I do my, you know what I'm saying? Like I've been out here and just, (laughs) I I, I ain't never heard that energy. Your energy is immediately, and I think that's like the same energy of all of these, you know, entrepreneurs that get so praised is that the ones that, that, that have longevity are the ones that understand you treat people like people, no matter what their position is. I learned that from my mom's. My mom's was the type that no matter where we pulled up on, if we pulled up on a valet, she treat the valet with the same respect as a pastor, as the same respect as the governor, as the same respect as a mayor, as the same respect as, cause she worked for a uh, Huntington Park Police Department. No and shit. Like, yeah, moms was really out of here. Moms like, is, uh, first of all, just yeah, side yeah, note. Yeah. Curtis King's mom, if you ever tune into his platform, we didn't even get to go into that, yeah, but when you yeah. were on going to, when you go on his platform, yeah. his mom throws some gems, bro. Yes, yes. She throws some blessings yeah. that literally are so great, man. Thank you. And thank you. I, I I would love to have her on the podcast too, bro. That'll be fire. That'll be fire. That'll be fire. Yeah. yeah, it'll be. But anyway, side note, yeah. I just had to say that, man. Mom's that. is like really <laughs> on it, man. I appreciate that. Well, she, she, 
taught me that lesson early is that there, there are no there are no different levels of, of how you treat people. It's, it, it really is like you give you give folks you give folks the opportunity to show you their, their, their colors, but you don't let them you don't let anybody you don't let anybody make you less of the giant that you are inside. Mm. Right. And, and, and part of that giant is, is a humble giant. Part of that giant is being able to understand that you are so important to a situation that you don't have to take all the credit, right? right. You, you understand that it's a synergy in anything that's going on. That's why any, anybody who ever asks about my music, I can't talk about my music without talking about, oh gosh, the oldest, because how important he is to that piece. Right. Um, I had a career before I met him, but I know what he stands for this part of my, especially this stage of my career. And so that third thing I was going to say about aligning with your purpose is how can you use it to give back to others? Mm. Because if, if you don't have a purpose unless it somehow some way gives back to other people because the secret of living is given. Right. Talk if you me. can't find how to align, how that gives the other people, yeah. you're probably not aligned with your purpose because it's only serving you. Right? Yeah. So we none of us was brought here just to serve ourselves. That's the if that's the case, we'd be gone by 15. We done. I think I think when you get to that and not even get spiritual on sure. you, but I think that's the one of the first traits of evil. Yeah. That was what Lucifer Absolutely. initially did. Absolutely. He was the, That's if you know anything energy. about it in the Bible, it's just in there. Like, he literally was the most powerful, beautiful musical. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah, yeah. Angel. Yeah. yeah. He was the one. He was the chosen one. He right. had it. He was right. Anakin in Star Wars, you yeah. know? <laughs> he was the one, Facts. you know? Facts. And this nigga really thought, he was like, all right, well, fuck it. I'm about to be more powerful than the creator. Yeah. Idiot. Yeah. He, he, How he, you gonna be more powerful than the nigga who made you? He dropped the ball. And then, he, and then God has the so much ever swag. Got yeah. God has so much swag. He was like, all right, cool. Fuck it. Get out. Yeah. Take the niggas that believe in you too. <laughs> Take all the niggas too. And do that shit. Yeah, so, yeah, but yeah, I think yeah. just to bring it back, yeah. that when you start working for self, yeah. that's the that's not of God. Right, that's not of right. spiritual. So God's not gonna bless you with that. Well, and, He'll and, let you rock. For sure. He'll let you yeah, rock. Yeah. But you ain't gonna get it's eventually. Something is not gonna work. Well, I think another important piece of that too is that, you know, as much as it was me finding my purpose, I think also too, the other part that you talk about, if you believe in God, I believe that you won't receive the kind of blessings that are entitled to you because sometimes we're too giving to other people, right? Mm. Like, I don't mean too giving in a, in, a, in a sense that we have, we run out of things to give. I mean, we end up giving everything before we fully absorb or even understand what it is that we have that is right. a value. And then therefore we give it away because we don't value anything we receive. So right. we gotta make sure that if you, if you value yourself, you value your own growth, at some point in time, you do have to, you know, people are call it being selfish, but you do have to make sure before you shine any light on anybody else yeah. and try to be a lighthouse, you gotta shine light within first. Yes. So for me, that was the thing. I was like, all right, cool. Well, <laughs> well, I knew that being in the IE because I knew so many people, so many artists, I'm always throwing beats out there, right? right. Beats that I'm sure that I could have rapped over and turned into, I'm not worried about yeah. that. Let's just cook, cook, cook. Yeah. Feel like I was, you know, like a young Steve Nash in this. But, <laughs> but right. I had to get to a place where it was like, there ain't nobody else around you except for you. Do you really want to do this? And um, I think that was also another reason why I took the hiatus with music is that <clears throat> to be an artist in 2019, uh, is so self-serving. You have to be self-serving in order to to really make this work. So you had to break. You had to break the habit of so giving to even be an artist in 2019. What well, would you say? Something of that nature. Something like that. But but I, I'm saying these are two different pieces. So that first one is at some point in time you do have to be selfish. On this one, I was saying that I was ready to give so much value because I realized okay, the secret to living is given. Right. Now this is the phase in which I do need to give. Right. I was saying that. That, that could be that, a reciprocating. Well, what, what, it, 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 in that point where I'm giving, I need to make sure that, um, that I was in a position to do that to begin with, right? Mm. And so there's a lot of things that, 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 that happened. And I was like, man, I want to give right now. I don't want to be the guy that has to self promote 50 songs or a song 50 times on Instagram or on right. Twitter. And I'm like, there's more value that I can give you than just this song. The song is only one you know, uh, uh, one face of the many faces that I can give that can inspire you, entertain you, make you happy, make you You laugh, can give cry. a person a song, but you could teach someone how to make a beat and change their lives. And I'm telling you this, we, <laughs> we, we all, and that's a bar, because we all remember the, the person that taught us how to tie our shoes or ride yes. a bike. Yep. We know their first name, Talk last name, even if we ain't talked to them since then, we remember them. And um, I think that's important. So that's what kind of led me to the YouTube work to where I went, I went a thousand percent into that. And I was like, you know what? Let me give 
the energy that wasn't given to me when I first came up. Because when I mm. first came up, I mean, for a lot of us, it was just you figure it out on your own, right? Yeah. It was like tough love. But I got into a headspace that was like, damn, hip hop is really the only genre where we look down upon teaching each other, right? Even though like the most legendary figures within the hip hop staple have on some point or some level taught. But, yeah. the, but certain, when you put that stigma on independent artists, they look at that as like, oh, oh, you missed your window. Oh, you falling off. Oh, so now you're just going to teach because you couldn't do. <laughs> you know what? I'm glad you said that. Because yeah. I can see it like this, okay? Mm -hmm. In 2000, let's say 10, 11, 12, sure. tours. Yeah. Birds. Yeah. Paid dues. Yeah. Number top 40 on iTunes. Right, 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 right. Now, two year hiatus. Yeah. Teacher. Yeah. It will appear to the sure. average eye. Sure. You you gotta be honest. For sure. And but you it know, would appear like, okay, and, well, and, maybe it didn't yeah. pan out. So now he's taking a teaching he's route. Of, but you know what's beautiful about this is that it taught me something else too, because it wasn't even 2016 and 2017. Oh gosh, Leotis and I had two albums, two EPs that went number four on the hip hop iTunes chart. And this back is during the hiatus. This, well, this is before the hiatus, the last Damn. hiatus. So, Somersault was the last project I released before the hiatus, and Somersault went number four uh, on the iTunes hip hop charts. Right. Before that, thank you, uh, Jubilee Year went number four on the iTunes hip hop I charts. I was gonna bring up Jubilee. That's another one. So, I, I had, I felt at this point in time that as an independent artist, I had showed you. Although it may not be on a level of a tech nine, I showed you how to to even if you're going to be seen as local artists, that doesn't mean that you have to be seen as a broke artist or you have to be seen as a because like I feel like we it's we, about to check. I know so many not to cut yeah, you off not for sure. I know yeah. so many niggas that's quote unquote signed to a label. Yeah, on right, right. But I got more money than them exactly and, in my and, bank account right now we, today. If we really gonna talk. If about, we went bank account really for bank account, about the bag. Yes. If we gonna really talk about bag the bag, talk. do you want to hear from somebody that that said, you know what? And I, and this is not a shot to anybody who who, who ever signed. Of course I understand not. anybody. Everybody has a different situation and and they have a different vision for their life. But for me. It was like I couldn't see myself being in a situation where I had to always answer to a middleman or somebody that had mm. more, more, more of a uh, of a position in me because I signed something on a dotted line. When it was like I got this. Not only do I have the same 24 hours a day as this person, not only do I have great ideas myself, but I know a lot of people. I have a great network of people that if I want to get something activated, it's about four or five phone calls and we got the thing going on. And so. It's funny how we look at things like locally grown is something that is celebrated, right? right. Locally grown, whatever it is, vegetables, marijuana, whatever. <laughs> locally <laughs> right, grown, right. like we 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 up that. But when you think about a local artist, it's seen as like a diss. But it's like that should be the most empowering thing that you ever hear about. Local was right. the fact that here's somebody that is from our area that that has found a way to like like fuck all the music shit found a way to make a living as a man or a woman. Right, right. First and foremost, you're not out here robbing nobody. You're not out here doing nothing crazy. You're not out I'm here. I'm glad you're saying this right like, now. Niggas need to hear it. just make it like, like it's, it's not bad. It's not what's a bad wrong with making What's wrong with making 50K, 60K a year I'm off, your, off your love? I'm saying. I'm you saying. You don't have to be. I know uh, niggas is like, I'm not uh, in, and we ain't even digging in pockets or nothing. Sure, sure, sure. But sure, niggas sure. need to be, we're, I'm transparent. Like, niggas got to be transparent. Niggas can DJ. Yeah, yeah. Niggas can DJ. It's just multiple streams of income. But the thing about it is, it's, it's for some people who have a vision of what they what they ultimately like. When they close their eyes and they see themselves on a stage or they see themselves doing something, they they see Jay Z, they see Kanye, they see you know uh, Trap, they see all these different people. Right. But they don't realize like like. Those things had to make their own Wikipedia page. Right. They got their own chapters. This is the saga of, of, of Kanye when he had, he's going through his Trump years. This is the saga of Kanye when he was in 808s <laughs> and Heartbreaks. Everybody right. got their own chapters. We're not supposed to be reliving anybody else's chapters. So for, for everybody that is that is listening and anybody that is an artist that feels like their their career isn't worth anything unless you have these things that kind of like co-sign you or, or get your cloud up, all of it is bullshit. Because most of the people you will meet in this industry you are going to be surprised at how many of them are in leadership positions, but they're not leaders. How many of them damn. look like money, but don't have a dollar to the damn name. And That's so the sad part. It's the sad part, but it's also the humbling part that made me realize like, like there's been companies that I've worked with on the internet um, because of my work with the YouTube that I realized like they're million dollar companies 
that don't have a fucking clue. And I'm, I'm looking at them and I'm like, hold on. They don't know shit what's going on. You you have a business. You have a multi-million dollar <laughs> yeah. business. And you asking me about shit on Instagram? <laughs> really? Oh, so I, I had this. So the thing is, I, I had to say, really? I'm like, really? Right? So I had the illusion in my mind that a certain level of income may, meant a certain level of intelligence and IQ. And that's just not true. It's no. naive. But we, we give that because we're like, well, he had to be smart if he made. So to go back to the original statement about, you know, it could appear that. If anything, what I want anybody to look at is the fact that I had it activated in my head. I saw the outside point of view. You have to see me still doing these things. So right. this is the reason why Steve Jobs' song drops and you see the visual and you see the push for it. You see yeah. me, you know, push and get, and get my own numbers on that and, and turn that into, into Congrats, a, a marketing man. push because guess what I can thank you? Guess what I can do from there? Now I have a community of folks that I can say, look, I just did this and this was successful for me. Try it out for your next song single, your song Damn. release. So now I'm doing and teaching. And that's one thing that I kind of lost out on is that I wanted to teach so much because I had so much to say that I stopped doing it, not because I couldn't do it, but because it was this is more this is more uh, uh, fulfilling. So did you start teaching during this hiatus time? When did you start start and begin well, teaching? Because yeah, I'm sure yeah, we yeah. can go into because it's funny. Uh, this is how I just know how God works. It's funny. Mm -hmm. I'm in my in my notes. I have all these different questions, but yeah. I'm like, hold on, because <laughs> I want to know now. I'm now I'm just asking questions. Yeah, I'm yeah, curious about this good. one. When did you start teaching? Because I know you're come up. I yeah. know about the tours. Yeah, yeah. We know about, and I want to talk a little bit too about the Curtis King mm -hmm. for Pay Dues marketing oh, campaign. Man. Yeah, yeah, that, was that you time. started. Yeah, that was one of the first big campaigns I've yeah, ever man. seen. Well, I seen one of my quote unquote homies. Yeah, yeah. Get on from the internet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's crazy. But when did you start teaching first? So, like, how did that start? And so, who helped you along that? Well, uh, officially teaching, um, in terms of like the 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 YouTube and, and just yeah. really what I thought was just sharing game. I didn't even look at it as teaching at the point. Um, was only like two thousand. How was that about 2016 maybe yeah. but even then i didn't look at it like that i looked at it like i'm just gonna you know have this platform to where i can give and then you know uh uh you reap and you shall sow like uh, whatever you believe in like the karma was going to come back and 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 be able to be something that was reciprocated because i right. give so much right but i still didn't look at myself as a teacher what i realized was that i've been teaching my whole career within the music i was industry. just gonna say that I just I didn't got, recognize myself as that. I for sure got a lot of free game from right. you. I, <laughs> hey, I appreciate it, my brother. I appreciate you for that, too. I, yeah, for sure, yeah, I, I remember you. pulling up to the crib, yeah. and you were the one that let me know that I had a voice when it came to, like, beats and Sound producing. Packs, yeah. And then you were like, my nigga, just come over and let's just make some shit. And you were like, me with a you gym like, just too. did it. And yeah. you gave me the Big Cali sound pack. Yes, yes. My yes. nigga, I didn't know what the fuck I did. <laughs> to this day, I don't have the sound because I still don't know. Okay? So he's still, I'm still he learning. But here's the thing, though. Yeah. I, I always trusted your word yeah. when it came to things because you were always consistent in right. putting out something. Right. I'm that person. Well, you that know what? Looks. It, it, I'm the look yeah. person. I don't give a like. I'm not gonna jive you. Right, right. I'm not the right. one to be like, oh, you know, I really no, my nigga. I'm gonna have to see. I don't give a fuck how much I'm cool with you. Yeah, yeah. I'll be cool with you and be like, you ain't that shit. I don't but, know what you done. You know what? And this may be inspiring to somebody that's out there listening. Is that uh, it's only you and a handful of other people that believed it. Even when it sounded right, even when they saw it work for me, there were people that you know. Even like back in my Black Cloud days, there were signs where I would share things with my brothers and, and I would you know tell them like. I got a vision. I, I believe right. this can work, but without having any kind of like evidence that is where they're going, right? Their mind is thinking this level. Yeah. They immediately negated it. Ah, no, no, no. I don't think that's going to work. And then you start realizing, I know you got into the situation where you just <laughs> gave out so much game and you're like, fuck that. I'm going to use all this shit for myself hey. now since, since and y'all, none of y'all want to put that into action. And I've been telling people the same thing year after year after year. And then that's funny when, when people come to me, I give them advice. And they come to me years later and give me the same advice, but they never did it. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I just gotta stare at you. What? What is? What, what, why do people? You know what why I do get, they do You that? know what I get that though from? I'm just gonna side note it. I get that from women a lot. <laughs> oh, okay, I can see a lot that. Of, see a lot that. of females yeah, yeah, that yeah. I didn't yeah. gave a lot of great games to. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking like prime big C. Yeah. I actually care about yeah. your fuck ass game. <laughs> And then you go, and then you leave. Now's my time to rant. Hold yeah, on. Go ahead. Then no. you leave, and then you come back and try to give you the game. Like, well, you know, I had to go back and I had to do this, and I just decided that I need to do this and that and this. And I'm like, is that right? Shawty, did not leave? <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. And a lot of folks, like, when I when, the, the moment I realized that, and I was like, you know what? 
I understand why people don't have confidence, why only a, a few people have confidence in when I say these things. Um, one of it is the fact that I didn't probably didn't deliver with as much confidence as I would today mm. because I have so much evidence of the things that I've shared working. Right. And now that I have this community of Curtis King TV, I'm seeing it work on a daily basis. Can't tell me shit. I was right? glad, I'm glad you brought up so, Curtis King yeah, TV. We definitely got to, yeah. Please. Yeah. yeah. All right, because you know what? I'm going to be real. I'm glad. Uh, see, because you my nigga. Okay, look. Yeah. I know what it is. Yeah. You said it was a dub a month or yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm just going to come clean. 95 a month. Yeah. It ain't a lot. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. But I don't get it. So I was like, I'm going to wait until no, the it's podcast. All good. That's perfect. So he can That's explain perfect. to me what the fuck. Because so, I'm a DJ. Yeah. I have two podcasts. Yeah, yeah. How could it benefit I think, me, you I think? I think that you would love. I think this is going to be, honestly, the new model for content creators uh, of, of all sorts. Podcasters, YouTubers. And even if I don't use it, or yeah, if yeah. I do, oh, I, no, just wanna know, I, wanna, I, wanna I just want to know. I want to share it with you when it, with anybody out there that is on these social medias and you're relying upon them to be your home. You cannot rely on any social media to be your home. I repeat, you cannot rely on any social media to be your home. You That's want one exactly what I'm doing right now. Well, okay, <laughs> hear, me, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. You want two examples why? Why not? Talk to me. MySpace, Friendster. Damn. Okay. Um, I mean, what, what? <laughs> anybody who remembers MySpace, as much as it's a joke now, it wasn't a joke back then. It was a, it was a, a hundred, five hundred something million dollar company that was really taking up a lot of people's time. It was like the first, before even Facebook, the, when it was called the Facebook, and you had to have a college email to get in there. I'm going to show how to wait for my, uh, my, my I, used, I had to give up an RCC. I had to sit on the outside for a second. I was like, all right, y'all go so bad. <laughs> but, but my point is this. Okay, so, so social medias have come and gone immediately, right? And so, right. Uh, uh, not even immediately, but they, they've, they've been just evaporated out of nowhere uh, when some moves have been made. And so, I left so much work that I did on there, from the photos to the HTML, design of my pages, to all the fan, friends that I that I had on there, the fans that I had on there. Right. And literally, I could not get in code of any of them because I waited too long. And it's not like you could just email them directly from your MySpace. You put up a bulletin, you DM some of them, or your direct message, and that's hey, about you're it. you're speaking real shit. You know what? And side note, yeah. I seen with Instagram one time, on your us, when I first did Argument yeah. Radio. Yeah, yeah. And I think you probably got affected by it too. It was one morning I was gonna drop the episode. Yeah. And I was like, okay, Jordan sent me the sure, pack. Sure. I had the captions ready. Yeah. Everything was loaded in Apple. Right. And YouTube was going good. Yeah. I just had to put it out. Yeah. Instagram goes down. Yes. See what I mean? I was fucked. Now, now, now hear me out. Oh. Hear me out. Hear me out. This same thing that you're talking about right now in terms of not having a control with the social media is the same environment within YouTube, even worse. YouTube started getting rid of people left and right that had millions and millions of subscribers. For what? Well, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a few different things. One, it's the fact that YouTube is going to YouTube TV and YouTube is going to become like like their own version of like a sling TV and whatnot. Be like online cable oh, and all that. Oh, I see that for the 40. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but you got to think, they've been told that for years, like... Uh, I don't watch TV, I watch YouTube. YouTube's like my TV. And so a lot of folks say that, they just made it a literal thing. So when they started doing that, they started booting off any channels that were pretty much deemed uh, uh, not channels with high retention, where people are gonna sit there and watch them as if they're, 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 they're TV TV uh, 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 shows and whatnot. Like, so nobody, you're not popping, basically. If, basically, if you're presenting content that only a niche, niche, niche demographic it's just sitting there right. and, and, and it's not the people that are the most important to them, like the gamers, like the how-to artists or the how-to uh, uh, channels or the, the makeup channels or the ones that people are paying, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars a year just to, to, to keep up with these different fields. They're not worried about it. Music, right. unfortunately, as producers falls in that category. So there's a lot of producers that have YouTube pages full of just what they call beat visualizers that basically are, you know, these the sound waves going up with their beat and all of this. YouTube can't put that on ABC. Hey, but so, okay. so think of it like this. Any content that you can't imagine being on ABC or, or NBC or, or even on a, on a, like a Comedy Central where they kind of can cuss on the weekends, you're not going to be lasting long on YouTube because YouTube wants YouTube is going after the big money ad dollars. And if Disney goes on it, let me give you an example of what happened when uh, the first ad apocalypse happened. And this changed a lot of things, too, is that imagine this. You have you have a company and you make gummy bears. Right. OK. And your prime demographic is kids 
and adults that remember their childhood when they take these gummy bears. Right. Then a channel comes up that has softcore porn. And one of the people in the softcore porn is like, oh, it's soft like a gummy bear. And then the ad pops up because YouTube has voice recognition. Oh, shit. And this is what shit. triggers your ads. So they say that in the actual video and it's actually captioned. And now the ad comes up and it looks like that brand co-signs that softcore porn. Oh, no. So oh, that shit. happened. Now think about the, you know, remember the Momo challenge? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, for, that for weird the, ass. The little weird ass character that was telling kids to commit suicide. Guess what? If that video comes up and there's ads that are attached to that, like, I don't know, Disney. Wait that's, a minute. That is a bag that, a that, that, that YouTube is missing out on. Wait, Disney would just attach themselves to some. They wouldn't, but the thing about it is because that's not their that's not their system. Oh, that's I get YouTube what you're saying. System, I get right? it. Okay, so, so YouTube has an automated system. They have an automated system that basically throws out ads in different videos based that's upon how relevant it is to the conversation in the video, and even to a certain degree, some of the comments that are made within the, the YouTube video. So these ads are generated literally to get people to click on them, buy the the products. They get a cut. Uh, from YouTube, from people buying the products, and at the same time, the YouTubers get a smaller cut for being the the, the reason the traffic got sent there. So they're getting rid of anybody that's this gonna cut so into much, that bag, this bro. So I'm much business. You. This is so, so, so hardcore. It's all good. <laughs> and we so in episode deep. three. We in episode I'm three. I was about to say, I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? So like, I nigga, had, I'm on YouTube. No, I'm look, look, <laughs> it's all good. You're good. Because the thing about it is, folks like you are good because you know how to keep folks' attention. And I could see this being on a cable cable ch uh, channel, and people are just not even. Thinking twice, like I'm gonna watch this. But a lot of folks have content and they're kidding themselves about whether people actually want to engage with it. And so I was like, you know what? It was around the same time that uh Nipsey Hustle passed away, and we know R. what R. his P. motto was about, rest in peace for sure. What his motto was about taking back ownership, and it and it didn't ring any, it didn't ring as clear as in when he passed away. But show did it. And, and a I, lot of folks I feel activated on that and saw it. I, I had was to come clean, I had to come clean about that because yeah. I used to listen. I used to listen. Yeah. I used to listen to Nipsey a lot, especially when I was working as a security guard. Right, and it just helped me, like him and Jeezy. Mm -hmm. And then, but I never was really, really a fan like that. Right, I understood what he did. I got it. But when he passed away, yeah, yeah, and I started looking at all his interviews, and I was like, this nigga's been positive his whole life. He's been given, he, he's, he's just been, he's giving, been giving the clues every way to it. And, and, and 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 for me, that was something that you know, have an opportunity to uh, to meet him with Noah at, at, a, at a pay dues announcement event. And we live streaming and, and he's in the back in there and he's just kind of kind of shopping it up with us to get that energy, have an opportunity to be there and then to witness what he did and built everything. And he did it the complete opposite of what the the stereotype of what an independent rapper is all yeah. about. And he and he talked about things that everybody didn't want to talk about within their music. And I saw that and I always looked at him as like <laughs> an entrepreneur and a first Right. And an artist second, not because he was not talented as an artist. I was a fan he, of the music, but I looked at him as a bit. I looked at him for his business acumen, and I was like, "Y'all don't understand how much of a brilliant man this is." Hey, to play, yeah, exactly. So he did the hundred dollar album. Do you remember when I had a hundred dollar box? Nuh uh Okay, so I did this 2013. You can go check it out. It's on YouTube. I I, I was so inspired by him doing that hundred dollar project. And I remember looking around at artists and I was like, do you realize how big of a fucking deal this is? Right. And they were like, I mean, I mean he crazy for trying to do that. Like, that's that's what's up. Like, he got it all. Brody got it all. That's cool. And I'm like, that's all you got from it? Is it that's that's. So I looked at that and I was like, no, nah, that's a calling for him. He was putting pretty much putting out a bat signal for every independent artist out there. You're not you're not being paid what you owe. Right. And a lot of you are settling for a lot less. And so I took that message and was like, you know what? I'm going to take all my mixtapes all together. I'm going to get them packaged up. I'm going to have a DVD with all of my music videos. I'm going to put socks that have my logo on them. And I'm going to make, I'm going to have somebody, uh, the homie Milk Chamberlain designed a game box. And it was a hundred dollar game box from Curtis King that I did. Damn. I did that. Respect Magazine did an article on it. Tag Nipsey. Nipsey retweeted it. And I was like. Real nigga. I looked at that and I was like, now I feel like even when I step here on Twitter, I feel like not that I got to like do a show for him, but I felt like somebody that I look up to on that business level yeah. who is doing in the same field is is watching something, right? I don't know to what degree, but that was enough uh, for me. Sees. And I DM and I'm, I, I, I said, you know, I, I appreciate you, you not only, you know, retweeting and engaging with it, but just being an example to folks like me. I got it. And, he, you know, and, and, and he put God will rise. And so... That was his response? That was it. 
But that's them. You know, that's, 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 that's a private God will rise. God will rise. Right, right. Oh, so, man. so, God, so I, miss, that, I really miss Nip, man. That I'm energy, a clean, man. man. That energy, that energy is something that that I don't think a lot of people understand. When he when he passed away, he was killed in in broad daylight in front of his place of business, helping somebody, right, getting them clothes, and he was killed in broad daylight on cameras in front of people, in front of kids, in front of his place of business. Damn. I don't think people understand what that what that example says. And so when I saw that. I was like something of something happened in the month of because it was two days after my son's birthday, right? Oh, um, come on. and 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 I looked up and we had like a birthday party and everything for him. And I looked up and I was like, like seeing that, and I'm always I always feel like they the the folks, the powers, whatever it is, take out them kind of folks, the rare, the, the rare, ones. the rare ones. Like they yeah. take those folks out. And I looked at that and I was like, you know what? Fuck fear. I said, like, at this point, mm. no matter what you do, I like, like you took that route with that's it. That's what I looked at that and I was like, instead of because I I I was hurt to see that because of somebody I looked up to, but then I was looking at it and I was like, something I've been doing when people have passed away that are close to me, and I'm not saying he's close to me, but I'm saying the people that had an impact on my life is I try to I try to think of what would the conversation be if I could talk to them one more time from the grave. Mm. Would they be angry at me being so emotional and not doing anything with that emotion? Or would they say, don't let this be in vain? Damn. And so I took that and I remember driving down, we got this long walk, uh, this long little drive that's by the house. I drove with my wife and I just, I, tear, I let the tears come out for one night. And after that, I was like, fuck that. Fuck anybody that ever doubted me. All of that shit, it ain't for them. It ain't for nobody else except I gotta get this idea off and I'm, I refuse to let YouTube have me sitting up here like studying every single move they do so that you know father youtube can give me permission to be great right Fuck that. right so then i was like you know what i had a conversation with with one of my, my close friends named epic and he told me he was like i hear it in your voice and i think it's time i think it's time for you to activate and do this subscription model and so what i did was i said you know what i'm going to do the best within my ability to build my own youtube in 72 hours that was the vision. What the fuck? Right? And so... <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't call me. I'm yeah, so yeah. glad. It'd have, been a, it'd have been a lot. It'd have been a lot to take I'm in. I'm so glad. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. All right, Kurt, yeah. hold on real quick. I, I tried, rolled up I tried to explain this to Murs, and he was like... I was like, bro, you got to do this. He was like... Basically like, fuck that. That's not like a whole lot of shit you're doing. 72 <laughs> hours? 72 hours. So 72 hours, I did the math at a 1995 price point. All I need is 75 people to sign up. And if they sign up, that passes the income that I make from YouTube. Because we, a week before all of this stuff happened, YouTube took, like, basically dropped my, my monthly income, which is one of my streams. They took my monthly income and they cut it by $700. How? And I look, because you take a week off from YouTube, that's like taking taking a month off from your job. God, so you gotta, they, they demand that much. When you set a it certain- It sounds very slavish. You get what I'm saying? It sounded like if you don't so, give them content, they're you gonna cut get, your pay. So the, the way they justify it is the way that the reason why nobody makes a direct correlation between the, the content creator and YouTube and say like it's the slavery thing is because nobody said you had to show up to YouTube. Nobody said you had to like at one point you weren't even getting paid is what they're still saying. I get saying. it. I get so, it. Okay, maybe that was a little extreme. No, no, maybe I'm a little way. No, you're right. You're right. I'm like, I'm but like, you know what? It sounded deep, man. That same, like... that same disrespect <laughs> that you feel when you said that is the same thing I felt when I was like taking back ownership is the mantra. Okay, so then let's 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 take that all the way in this space because we gotta make this mean something. I gotta make this mean something because it hurts too much for this just to be a moment in which I'm just like, you know, making a bunch of RIP beats and and posting up. Like I still was posting up like, you know, his interviews and really making sure that the message was what got highlighted, right. not the killer, right. not the 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 way it happened, not the the conspiracies. The message he sent out was more important and it was elevated while people are all thinking about him. So I was trying to do my best to make sure those messages were getting out there, at least the ones that touched me. And so I sat up there and I said, OK, 75 people sign up. I will literally surpass the income that I'm making right now on YouTube with that $700 drop off. And we got 75 in the first week. God damn. I've been on YouTube for five years to make the amount of money that I made. 75 people sign in a week. We got that. So. That happened. I was like, that was because because you got to understand when I made that transition, I told YouTube, YouTube, the people on YouTube, you know, a lot of folks out there never, never did shit. So that's why they they, they don't think you're going to do shit. And they'll look at me and they're like, 
you know, make your own YouTube or your own own website. Like, good luck with that. Like, you'll be back here in a few months. Is what I would have thought me, that. Right? I'm so, coming cl- Bro. But I don't take you, it offense when you, you say that. Can't. I don't take offense when you say that. Because I yeah, believe yeah, yeah. in you, Curtis. Yeah, yeah. I believe in you, Curtis. Yeah, yeah. But this is YouTube, bro. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. But you know These what? These are the big guys, bro. <laughs> this ain't- you know what? You know what I realized? YouTube was the wrong thing to replace in terms of that sense. The, 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 the next move is Netflix. Mm. Because YouTube is thinking too small about the kind of information that I that I have. The kind of information I have should be consumed on a daily basis. It's, it's information that applies to a very niche demographic, but it's stuff that you can literally sit there on your phone if you had an app, scroll through and be like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm I want to get some some Instagram marketing advice today. And so that's what I what I've already created within this space. So then you sign in versus a membership side that basically has like all these archive videos that I recorded exclusively for the website. It has all of the courses I ever did, how to build your own music producer website course. Uh, it has uh, FL Studio Beginners course. It has Damn. a, um, we had a course donated from another big YouTuber named BusyWorks Beats that is about how to how to uh, do your own sound design. So if you want to make your own drum kits, you literally Damn. have everything that you need, about 60 hours worth of video just coming in there. Then on top of that, I built, uh, uh, well, I added a private Discord community, which is kind of like it's like, like like a, a digital chat community and whatnot. And so I had the people who sign up go over there. When they went over there, they started donating free uh, 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 sounds to the community. And then within uh, two weeks, I was bringing in coaches and different influencers from YouTube to be yeah. coaches in the space. And we had over four gigs worth of free downloads for people that signed up. God damn. $20, you already passed that just getting there. So that's that, that's that. And mind you, I had my, my phone number on the website and I was taking calls. And I kid you not, like I had never been, a, I don't feel like I was ever deliberately a selling type person. Even when I worked at Quiznos, I wasn't a selling person. I was just like, <laughs> I feel you. It's on there. Go do what you know what, what saying. But yeah. even for the stuff that I was passionate about, I just felt like selling was so corny because I was just like, like, ugh, like I feel, I feel like a, like a sleazy car salesman. Not yeah. because my product ain't on point. You've never been that kind of nigga. It's not me. But yeah, when yeah. I got on that phone and talked about something I believed in, my 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 conversion rate had to be something stupid, like ninety six percent. Everybody that got on the phone with me, it was a no brainer. Not because I, I, you know, I got a mouthpiece, but because I believed in what I was saying and it resonated with the right people. And so they understood what the bigger message was. Um, here we are now. We started this in um, in April and now we're in the month of August and we just surpassed 740 members. Oh, my Paid God. Paid subscribers. Hey, my nigga. Thank you. Real Thank nigga. You. Thank you. Real so, nigga. So what? Wait, 700? 740 subscribers. And how long has this been? Since so this is what uh, uh, April May April May June July August that's about five months hasn't even been a year hasn't been a year yet so before the end of this year I'm looking to get to a thousand are you uh, going on Shark Tank you gonna take this on Shark Tank <laughs> <laughs> you know it, it, it's, you gotta, you it, go ahead for the these are great numbers these margins are good I'm yeah, like it's, uh, it's, it's, exactly y'all watch Shark Tank you, I, you I'm know, sorry you yeah, know I'm yeah. a bro I'm I, a hustler I know I know I'm like know, wait a minute know, I'm and, in but I got the thing is you know I. What I'm not doing is is being romantic about it because, you know, I, I keep adding features to this because right. I want to see what this can be on my own. Where like, do you I, think it's going? How far do you want to take this? I think that I can create a model right now that can get 10,000 subscribers in the next year and a half. But I also feel like I can duplicate this model in five other places and I would have 50,000 subscribers total. That's a million dollars a month is what I believe this can be in three years. If I want that, real talk. Is what this can be, real talk. So I would make not only right now it's like a school for everybody. Yeah. But this is literally going to be the startup money for the physical school that I want to build someday. I want to build a physical school for rappers and music producers, so that when you get out of high school, you have an option. You tell your moms, hey. The same process that I have to do to apply to be at Cal State Dominguez, which I applied to get there and all these different colleges and whatnot, I can apply to this Curtis King University right. and I can go into a physical school and be taught by artists that, that you know, I, some RE artists that have found success independently and be able to share and get that game. MERS becomes a teacher in there. Right. Um, I'm about to say, you know, and with the people you know. I'm saying. And the people that we know, and I'm, I'm sure saying, like and we, people will be yeah. down just to come up in there and just talk. Cause, Even just guest speakers. Yes. So yeah. I'm, I yeah, want to yeah, create yeah. that. And then I also, you know, that's also going to be the startup money to be able to create this another side thing that I want to do, but uh, a 24 hour vegan restaurant. And so all of these things <laughs> wait, get aligned with what wait I want to do. Hey, hold on. Yeah. Look at God. This is funny. 
the other night I'm driving because you know yeah. recently I just had surgery, I had weight loss surgery. Oh man, yeah. Didn't. So I'm down 120 pounds since last bro. year. Hell Thank yeah. you, I'm appreciate like, it. Yeah. And how you feeling? Oh, feeling good, yeah. feeling great. You see this feeling coming in weird. hot, <laughs> coming in hot. Nah, but the reason I'm saying this yeah. is I can't eat like everything. I have to yeah. eat clean. Like my yeah, eating yeah. has changed drastically. Right. Like I was laughing here. I ate a muffin. I was telling them, I was like, hey, don't don't tell nobody I ate a yeah, muffin. Yeah. Okay, this is a lot. But that's good that but you wanted like thing, that. It's like bad, but anything. Yeah. Long story short. I was like, uh, I was like, I was driving the other night from a gig. It was like three in the morning. Yeah. And you know, I had a couple, you know, and I was right, right, doing my right. thing. But I was tired. I was like, man, I'm just hungry. I need something to eat. And exactly. when you have surgery, like exactly. I had, like the weight loss surgery, yeah. your stomach's loose. So when you're hungry, you don't have vitamins, you have nothing. So you right. can like black out. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I just want something to eat. Yeah. There is nothing healthy. No, exactly my to point. Eat exactly after my point. 8 45 p.m. What's your options? Jack in the box, Dale Taco, a donut shop, like and a it, diner. And even though like <laughs> Dale Taco has has like fuck vegan that, options. Hey, fuck that shit. That shit made me sick the other day. Yeah. That okay, little well, beyond well, shit. Well, even even <laughs> I say, even though they trying to make the effort to do that, my thing is this. It, it's you know I don't work there, but I'm assuming it's cooked in the same grease as everything else. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's no way it's all the way. It ain't just the meat is the problem. The, the whole process is the problem. Like, little you homie can... in the back's not switching it up. <laughs> he ain't got time for that. He just trying <laughs> to get same, through his four hour shift. That same season, that same season salt they hit your fries with is the same one they hitting your burger with, and it, and it both got sugar. So it's like <laughs> it, it, it's. It's it's never gonna be a, a pure thing until you find that. And so when did you, know, you start going vegan? Um, so first I did pescatarian for some years, uh, after I went to this Tony Robbins event called uh, uh Unleash the Power Within. And that Shout was out like Tony a, Robbins. That was a huge shift for me. That was a was he lit? shift. Was it really how it is on the Netflix special when I seen him? Better. Better, better. I like, could just I'm, look at your I'm, face like you're still I'm there. Not, <laughs> I'm not the same human like I, I don't like one of my pet peeves is always when you hear people say, oh, this thing changed my life. It's like, did it really change your life or did it just open up another part of your brain that you didn't think existed or reminded you of your own greatness? And so this event, literally, I went there and I came out a completely different person. Um, the folks closest to me thought I was hypnotized. Right. Damn. And and the fact that it hasn't wore off since. And this is like 2000. 15 maybe 2015 2006 nah about probably around the same time so 16 whatever uh whatever it was it hasn't worn off it, yeah. has, it has only intensified because when i realized there's certain things that you realize that it's like three days and you spend about eight and a half hours sitting down and standing up and clapping every once in a while drinking water and literally the first day i was in there bro i went and i and i brought like a whole backpack full of snacks but the information is so good and it's so engaging and, and and it's so active and you got to talk to complete strangers about your goals in life and things like that. It's such an amazing situation that I think only ate like like a pack of raisins, drank a bunch of water, but You're I still had in. but I had more energy at the end wow. of the day. By day three, day two, uh, I was walking barefoot on hot coals. Fuck out of here. I, look at my face on hot coals. I walked on there and felt like I, I felt nothing which and this is what helped me understand you know because some folks look at that stuff and they're like oh whatever it's like you know tv evangel evangelist or whatever but i look at it and i say you know of course at some point what well, everything is a money play for some folks right yeah but that's to me it is your moral responsibility to be successful well and i mean not to cut you off yeah, but yeah. in real talk we've seen this in our lives if you go to church Exactly. <laughs> we grew up with that jug. If you really yeah, want to yeah, talk the yeah, money yeah, playing, yeah, like yeah. I, that's why I hate when people talk shit about like motivational speakers, yeah, like Tony Robbins yeah. or uh, what's my black dude name? Um, oh, oh, uh, uh, the real, real famous EJ, EJ, yeah. EJ the, the hip hop preacher. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. him, all them cats. Yeah. Why we tip the pastor, yeah. quote unquote. Yeah, yeah. Call it what you want. It's ten yeah. percent yeah. of your earnings. It's in the Bible. Yeah. We're supposed to do it. We take care of people who's supposed to give us the message. Right. Right. So if I choose not to go to a quote unquote physical church, if I just want to be spiritual, right. and then I want to buy <laughs> you know, yeah. the prosperous hip hop producer. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Or if I want to go, <laughs> if I want to go to Tony Robbins' event, yeah. and that's where I'm going to well, get my my nourishment. Here's my thing too. What I found, and I never told anybody about this before. What I found was that it was very much like church, and me being in that environment and feeling that way made me understand church a whole lot more because mm. I didn't understand coming up. Like I, I grew up in a church. My mom's played piano. 
in a, I was gonna say, gang your mom is real LA. musical, man. She's, she was like, in she there. Really Y'all made was, a beat together and everything. Man, she been in. I, I, she, she's as a child took me to so many churches in LA, and I've seen her play for so many different churches. I've seen every kind of passage you could see. And so, <laughs> so that being said, you know, uh, being in that in, in that in that environment, I was like, I feel better being here. I'm right. putting my hands up and I'm and I'm jumping, but I'm like. This is what gratefulness feels like. Mm-hmm. And so now you start realizing why when you see like the older lady that's in the front of the pew and she got her hands up, she got the fan and she's crying. It's like when you're grateful and none of this shit was promised. Right. It's, it hit different. Right. So for me, I'm so grateful because I, I look at that's why I don't listen to people who, who you know, be like, oh, they said, well, help, help. But yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Cause some same motherfuckers that went and went and bought the damn uh, uh, chicken sandwich from Popeye's. Hey, man, knowing, fuck that sandwich. Knowing, hold on, hold on, hold on. You got people in here who, even if they kind of want to help you, you know, damn well, Popeye's don't want to kind of help you. They don't want to do shit What's for you. What's the nutritional value right now sitting on that Popeye's chicken sandwich? Death. A but slow, people are waiting 15 minutes to death. get their death. Hey. They like, hold on. You said you ain't got no more. Okay, I'm gonna chill in the. Fr- I'm gonna parking lot. Pull how up about, on me. How about this, bro? Real talk, <laughs> real nigga, real nigga shit. I was talking about this the other day with my partner. I said I've quit a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm eight months sober of narcotics and all kind of nice. that shit, like nice. all that. Like I've quit a lot of shit. All I do is man. smoke That's weed, amazing, bro. drink water, yeah. and you know I try to eat clean. Yeah, yeah. You know as much as I can. But long story short, I said fuck every drug I've ever thought of doing. Yeah. Done. Yeah. The hardest narcotic I've ever quit in my mm-hmm. life that should be a narcotic. I know you going. It's Sugar, sugar and yeah. salt. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. shit will yeah. have you feeling harder than any cocaine. Absolutely. I, if you don't believe me, go in a store mm-hmm. and watch what happens when a kid wants some candy and you give him some candy. It's almost like it's if a rushed. nigga takes or, a bump. Or, how about how about or the, something deep? Yeah, yeah. Oh, or, or how, God, about the, how, about, how about the withdrawal? How about the withdrawal <laughs> yeah. of somebody on a no carb, no sugar diet? Woo! And how angry they I get, get it. I did it. I had to go on. Did you feel irritable, a, bro? I had to go on a clear liquid diet for two weeks before the surgery. <laughs> yeah, I, I stayed you away ooh, from ooh, everybody. Ooh, I wasn't even talking to girls. I was celibate. I couldn't yeah, even yeah, talk. Yeah, that wasn't yeah. out the question. Yeah, yeah. I'm about yeah. to really fuck with a female off no sugar, yo, and no drugs. Oh yeah, you. About and to. I ain't eating nothing, and I'm fat, <laughs> so I had nothing going, and there was no pleasure. For nothing. It was just no pleasure principle. Nothing. What Jay what Jay to say? Was all bad. The pleasure principle is nothing. Pleasure is nothing. It was nothing. nothing. Yeah, yeah. You gotta know, but you gotta know that too. But it was power. Yeah. And I and I always bring it back to religion. It's funny. Yeah. But what TDJ said, I remember he said in a message, uh-huh. who's well, a motivational speaker that I go, he was doing a message about how uh Jesus broke up the bread mm-hmm. and fed thousands of people, whatever, with fish. Yeah. And no one believed in him, yeah. but he had to break it. So he was saying there's power in the breaking. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have to believe in when you're getting broken. You have to believe. Even I like that, that broken. I like that. So before I had surgery, I had to mentally break myself down. Yeah. I had to let go mm-hmm. of those narcotics. I had to let go of those sick people. Mm-hmm. I had to let go of uh, that food. That food. Yeah. 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 I did not feel pleasure. I, I'm an only child. Yeah. I felt pleasure my whole yeah, life. Yeah. 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 In every way, I was always yeah, get what yeah. I wanted. Did it. Whatever right, I ate. Right, my dad right. was a chef. You know. Yeah, and all yeah. those guys. So long story short. I, it broke me to become who I am now, though. But, you, but we, but and we, you we come gotta, stronger from the we breaking. We gotta do it. We gotta like my thing. That's why I don't, I don't never try to rush somebody's process because, you know, somebody may be going through something where they need to hit a bottom or need to hit yeah. hit hit somewhere so they never forget this moment and never go back. I needed to do it for sure. I had some moments where I had to I had to hit my own version of rock bottom before I realized stop doing that shit. That's like, what you were saying when you went away. When I went away. But and and, and I said it's a lonely period. It's a lonely period. Especially, especially before I met who will become my, my my wife. Like it was a lonely period, but I was finally for the first time in my life okay and not and having anxiety about being alone. There's nothing wrong with it. I was looking at it and I was like, so wait a minute. I've been doing all the things that you've been showing so much love to for the last few years under anxiety, under constant anxiety, under constant stress. And now you're gonna give me peace and time and all I gotta do is just pay rent. Like I went from, you know, being in this house that I was in at to, to, to shrinking down, even though my business justified me being in a house, I shrunk down. Like I went and slept on the homie old gosh's couch during this period of time. Damn. And I went from going to his couch to a 700 square foot apartment where I could touch the toilet and touch the fridge at the same time if I wanted to. Damn, I'm exaggerating, time. but I'm just saying. Nah, I feel- it was 700 square foot. <laughs> it was small as hell, especially I when we had the little one. But, but I, I, I was- You kept it clean though. My thing, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but I was willing to make that sacrifice because what I realized, I looked around me and I was like, human beings are so impatient. 
and so many of them are three feet from gold if they just held just held on to patience just that's mm. you ain't gotta have the cheat code and there ain't no cheat code you ain't gotta have the secrets because there ain't no secrets mm-hmm. the secret is if you want a secret to, to why you can't accomplish Talk why you don't him. have what you don't want to have no the secret is even if i give you the secret you don't have the fortitude to do it anyways at mm. this point in time you don't have the the you if you're seeking the, the secret, you don't, you're, you don't have the grit That already. dog is not in you if you're looking you are, for the secret. It ain't no secret. I'm saying, so when I <laughs> when I realized... And that's a real game right there. I'm that's saying, a real ass I'm game. I'm saying, so I, I done been on YouTube and I gave st- information that I was like, like, damn, I, I, I should, man, should I be giving all of this? And then I realized they don't want that. They want to know how to turn the on switch on for F- FL Studio. I for sure want that. Not saying everybody <laughs> is like on a level, but I'm just saying like everybody has their own things you're that right. they deem the as the most majority. important and valuable. And so... It's naive for us to feel like our value was everybody's value. It's not the case. So I had to look at it and realize that, oh, before I go deep into the details, some people just need the bare essentials. And then when I realized most of the people that I was talking to when I gave producer advice wasn't necessarily producers, it was rappers aspiring to become producers. Right. Because they're not specialists. They're open to anything that's coming information-wise. Right. And the producer advice I was given, uh, I'm sorry, the, the rap advice I was given was to producers that had aspirations to rap. Mm. When I realized that I was like, I get it. You need I to get bring it. them together. I ain't gotta I ain't gotta worry about like, like, you know the levels of game that I give. The game that I give is the game that I give. Right. As long as I realize it's part of my responsibility as a teacher, as what I call a luminary, which is somebody that gives light and gives value. As a luminary, what my my responsibility is to ensure that I deliver it in a way that is as simplistic and as stickable and memorable that you actually let it sit in your brain and you make a different decision or have mm. the opportunity to mm. make a different decision when the time comes to you. And so when I realized I'm not a people changer, I'm a seed planner. Damn. That changed everything. You I don't can't, have to worry you about it anymore. No you can't manipulate a human. Why would you want to? Because if if, if it took me changing you before you made a choice, like, you good, can, good huh? round away. You huh? can't manipulate. You know who thinks they can manipulate a human? Who's that? Lucifer. Oh, the evil. Oh, yeah, I'm saying. Now you're thinking you're God. Yeah. At this yeah. moment, if I can yeah. feel like, yeah, what God didn't bring us here right. for that. God brought us here to help. Right. Plant the seed. Right. Move on. But you know what? I tell you what I found in my solitude too is that. Even what you're saying that right there, you're absolutely spot on. But even the word manipulation has been manipulated. Woo. Because manipulation is not meant to be yeah, positive or negative. No, I know, right. you're you're I know you right. did. I know you did. But I'm no, saying, right. I'm, saying not, right. I'm not saying you manipulate. I'm saying society has done that. Right. When I sat back and realized that the negative is just as important as the positive, the evil is just as important as 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 the good, and I have a I have a choice in every decision of what I'm making that for. And in mm-hmm. some in somebody's mind, like there's killers right now in prison who felt like they were righteous for the decisions they made. Now, killing is not the righteous thing to do. We know that, or, yeah. or, or I, you know. But at the same time, they feel like the same decision making we make when we do the right thing to them that was the right thing that was the only thing that was the right thing in their eyes and I'm not saying they're right I'm not saying I was gonna whatever. say so who's gonna say who's right is wrong my thing that. is this and that's not to make it to where it's a whole chaotic world what I'm saying is I'm looking at this and I'm realizing man I cannot look at things in such extremes because I'm being mm. biased to somebody else's point of view even when somebody comes to me and I'm like you're hating you're trolling that person thought they were telling the truth of their moment right there Right. that's their moment I ain't got to be around the shit, but it's that's their moment. <laughs> so when I see that, now I'm able to look at it. And, and, and that was something I, I was sorely lacking is the ability to look at it from all yeah. points of views because sometimes it's needed. But sometimes you get so emotional. You're like, fuck that. I don't care what you meant by that. Yada, yada, yada. I saw you deal with that in the beginning when um, first when you started your family. Like yeah. your family when yeah, I saw you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're posting pictures of like your children. Mm-hmm. Or your, your wait. My son. Son, my son. sorry. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mean Unless you know something whoa, I don't know. Whoa, that was that was that was Oh, whoa. Hold on, hold on. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, now that's what you, nah, but I remember you're posting the pictures, you and, you, and then you're posting pictures of your wife because you know yeah. she does her makeup Absolutely. and has that old way, which is even tight. Y'all help each other. Oh, iron yeah, sharpens, she's, she's iron sharpens iron. She's a beast. But I remember you were like, hey man, y'all gotta stop with these comments. It's like my family. Like you were just well, like, it, it, and I yeah, felt you. But like, then after that, yeah. you, you, this came out. 
you did your platform yeah. and then now it's like you have a cohesive machine and I'm glad you were so vulnerable though yeah yeah well, that's I, why people who <laughs> fuck with you yeah they really fuck with you the long way yeah for sure cause, for you, sure. cause you let niggas know you yeah. let your fans know you let your people know like hey my nigga like don't get it like, I'm still like, a real nigga from the IE. like I know I know every time <laughs> that you see me on YouTube is, is, is smiling and all that shit <laughs> but, but, but you mess with my family I will beat your ass right and this I know that family. energy is not the, probably the most consistent they've seen from me but it's like I don't need that if I feel like from an intellectual standpoint I can I can outsmart or outwit a situation before I have to go to road a physical physical is the last the last road but it's not a road that I'm afraid of going if I need to defend my family hey you said but, that's so eloquent right now look look that's you how said I gotta that's be so eloquent right- but see what I'm saying hey. see what I'm saying if you it, like I have a homie that has a saying and I thought it was the most brilliant thing and this really encompasses what I'm saying when I say this he says these niggas don't have the mental. He said they don't have the testicular fortitude. And I said, "What does that mean?" He said, "That means they bitches." And I said, "I like that way so much more." <laughs> I used because to say unstable creature. Unstable creature. <laughs> he said, "He said they lack the testicular fortitude." That make that, that makes somebody say, "Man, fuck you! What you mean by that?" <laughs> Hey, you really so do. if I did that, I already won. I won. I won, won before I had to lay any hands you're because right. because you ain't got to be smart to to, to to lay hands on somebody and be how many, hurt. Year, how many years did it take you to get to that uh, level of thinking? It had to be peace for at least a year. <laughs> peace for at least a year because Real I see talk. some. I see some. You know, it don't, it don't even be so much disrespect. Like some people be disrespectful, but for the most part, I just block because I know we're in a in an attention age where people just want a reason to have somebody that has something anything. going on to say something to them so they can say oh your life is not that good because you responded to me if right. you got time for that kind of energy you're not that positive I know what they're looking for so I typically just block but like once a month <laughs> am I wrong you ain't wrong talk to him so, this is what it's here so, for and sometimes it's not even so much as like like they saying shit that's, that's disrespectful it's just like shut the fuck up <laughs> Like, if I, like, 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 somebody, like I had, I, I'll give you an example. Let's go. My son, I love my boy. And, and, and my son, I want him to grow up to be whatever the hell he wants. Of course. If he chooses to go on the music, beautiful. If he right. chooses that he wants to be a, a professional bowler or plumber, yeah. I'm, I'm his biggest fan. Of course. Whatever you want to do, son, just be the best. I'm going to do whatever I can to help you prepare for that. Right. But my son jumps on there and he's smiling. He got like, you know, SpaghettiOs in his face or whatever. And producers are like, Oh, he's probably thinking about about, about what kind of beats gonna make today, huh? Uh-huh. uh-huh. Shut the fuck up. What are you eating? Well, shut up. I know that sounds so minor, but it's like you see it so much. No, no. And it's like he's like, I, he's, like, he's, probably 30... thinking like he's probably thinking like oh, I'm, I'm I'm the next to take over the throne of Curtis King. Shut up, shut up. Have you never been around people? Cause this shit is awkward. Hey, you want me to tell you what that is? That's that? uh we call that the bait and hook. And they just wanted to get your attention. <laughs> and they wanted to say, hey, I got Curtis King's attention. And you want me to tell you why? It's because I I used to do that when I was on the internet. Okay, okay. Yeah, just, yeah, I was a I, minor yeah, troll. Yeah, yeah. But that this was MySpace just, days. It's and I used to troll, but like, it's not real. It's not. That's fake. It's not. It's not. And, I see, and they got bots. But you know what? It's, but, <laughs> yeah. I, but I can almost like hear and smell the energy. And I, no. I know what you're saying with that, but I'm telling you, it's a no, different energy you. when I, I see you. some of it. And I'm like. Especially if you know them. How about that? Well, my thing is this. <laughs> not, not, I didn't really see that people I know, but I see that from the people who just come around and they're used to like. I think a lot of a lot of and this is where it becomes like like maybe this is not something that's relegated to just black folks. But I feel like a lot of people on the Internet, because they never or they don't have much contact with black people, when they see black folks that are successful, they look at us like creative fucking players on NBA 2K. Damn. And so they look at us and like, I don't like your beard like that. You are 14. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) You've never grown a beard. Why do you wear your hair like that? I'm not your fucking Minecraft character. The Sorry, fuck are you talking about? So I be seeing, so I be seeing shit, and I'm like looking at it, and I'm like, I have to sit with it for it. My new thing is instead of reacting, I just sit with it for a second, and I say, well, why does that make you irritable? Yeah. Right? What what is this going on? And I think about it, and I'm like, will it matter in 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 an hour? I think that's what Napoleon Hill said in um, right. some when I was listening to him on some audio shit. I was listening before work one day. Yeah, he was saying like one of the keys to success is not avoiding situations of confrontations right. at all costs. Sure. As many as sure, possible. Sure, sure, sure. Avoid confrontations of ignorant converse, like a pointless conversation. From a distance, nobody can tell the difference no between, one. between who is who. Yeah, yeah, And that's sure. where I mm-hmm. think, to bring it back, I love your platform. Yeah. Because Thank you. You, give a, you give a moment for people who are like us mm-hmm. to come together mm-hmm. and talk. 
and be well, around each other and grow and with each other because that. that's iron yeah. sharpens iron and a lot of people that's why i'm hoping to even build with here yeah, so yeah. that's why i even brought you here too because nah, it's like you got now it, i understand got what the platform is with what is it again if you don't mind what is it so curtis king tv basically is specifically for rappers music producers and singers who are looking for daily workshops like i have daily workshops in there that i basically sit in these video conference calls with rappers and producers from literally from California to New York to Australia to Germany every, Damn, everybody I be seeing in like six way video all calls all these different like 40, 50 people at a time in there sometimes and so we'll be sitting there every every day from Monday through Thursday we have uh, a different workshop the first one on Mondays we got a therapist this is a brother from Oakland named uh, Anaje and he's a mental health therapist mm -hmm. so we have a we have mental health Mondays on Monday so you basically start the <laughs> week so off great. get in your right zone get around people who are want to be productive is this a lot extra of folks, no this is all within the same $20 a month the same dub that the we were talking about earlier talking about with the same downloads and all the courses <laughs> yeah think about Netflix Netflix gives you the illusion that you have every movie that you could ever want but you only gonna watch so much during a month so you're gonna stay another so it's month, const and you constantly reload new. So basically, every month is twenty bucks. But no, I'm saying you constantly upload new material too. Constantly, also. constantly. So every day, every day that somebody joins is literally the most content the website's ever had. Every time they join, because I'm adding every day. So we have Damn. daily workshops that I record, and then I upload straight to the to the website. So you can watch them if you missed them. Can I watch work. it mobile? Is it on my mobile phone? Absolutely, also? It's, it's super fast. So where? How do I get it? Tell the people how to get this. CurtisKingTV.com. Uh, you go there. You can see the schedule. Tuesdays are Music Marketing Tuesdays. Wednesdays are Songwriter Workshop Days. Okay. Uh, Thursdays are FL Studio uh, Workshop Days. Fridays I do one on one consultations. People got to book those out within the actual. Wait a minute. So I can book a consultation. With Thirty minute consultation. Yeah. For the same dub. The same dub. <laughs> right? This is, this is amazing. So I'm saying this, this, hey, this. All right, I might just cop just to talk. I'm saying, look, just to look, say what's look, up. You got, my, you got my number. You better I stop. Know, I know. I like to just cop. Just call me. You just call me. I want to be in the yeah, community. Yeah, yeah, you come on in the I community. I want to talk to see what's come up. Nah, I want to talk man. to some niggas come, from Australia. Come, come see them because one thing that I had them doing this week um, is uh, uh, an assignment that I call your music career eulogy. Right. I made an assignment where basically... They had to imagine that their music career or their business as a producer or rapper died today. And what would they say as their last words at the funeral? And they had to sit there and make it within five to seven sentences. People mm. was in there crying. People was in there. Everybody in there had a breakthrough moment where they was like, I got to go out and get it. Because either damn. they look at the scoreboard and say, damn, I'm a lot higher up on the scoreboard than I realized. I just wasn't giving myself enough credit or looking at the scoreboard. Or they were like, I haven't put up enough points. And if my shit died today, it would be nothing but stories of all my untapped potential. That's what helped, that's what made me change my side. Because I was like, yeah. man, if I die, I could die today. I'm overweight. Mm. I'm on. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm doing drugs, and yeah. I'm not. I'm working. And yeah, I'm yeah, productive. Yeah. It yeah. looks good on paper. Right. Right. But I'm not happy with myself. And that's most important. Man. And so if I die today, right. What? What is the legacy you that know? you leave behind? So I, I'm now, like I said, even on yeah. Arboon Radio, I was like, I'm, yeah. you know, and I was talking about my dad. I'm finally at the point now where I'm happy. Yeah. So, and I'm happy and content with myself. I'm and so happy for you. Like so, at yeah. that point, and that's the point where I know that it's time to grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and, and so, and, but you, I, and I gotta, I gotta give, I gotta shine a light back on you and that you made such a huge decision when you when you gave yourself restrictions after that surgery. My grandfather had uh, his own surgery. Mm. And the day he got home from the surgery, he was sitting in the kitchen or sitting in his living room eating a pastrami and chili cheese sandwich. Stop it. No way. No, that's too painful. He dropped off a, no, an that's amazing too painful. amount. The day he's able to first sit up, and it might not have been the day that he got a surgery. That's I so want to say he went in there and got the last, I think he had it in, in sections. The last surgery, he went in there, and I kid you not, he sat there and devoured that sandwich. And then I looked at him, and I was almost like, what was it for? What was it for? Like, it was it was it the false sense of 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 accomplishment because you felt like, oh, you know, I finally did that and now I got a, a clean slate. But he didn't do anything with it. You did, right? And Thank you're you. putting those restrictions. That's Thank such you. that's that can like that is so monumental more than you probably even realize because you're just walking in purpose right now with my Appreciate grandfather, it, man. man. Like, and it's my mom. So like, my grandfather, God rest his soul. He 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 got that, but mentally he wasn't prepared for it. It's yeah. almost like the person that wins the lottery sometimes. And um, they don't know about They're not the mentally nights. ready. They're not ready to take that on. It's hard, even with signing. How do you think a lot of these artists? Hello. And, and a lot Talk of them. Talk to me. You've seen them. I've seen it. I, and I, I'm the one mentoring them now. 
I'm mentoring those artists now. So now the, the same artist that could have said the things that you, you were talking about earlier about, oh, you over the hill and you, you, you know, you doing all this teaching shit. I'm the one they call. Like I'm right. literally trying to become when when Bill Clinton went through his whole situation with Monica Lewinsky, he called he, he all the people he could have called, he called Tony Robbins. Damn. A day before he's supposed to be supposed to get uh uh what is that called? Uh um what is that called? They were trying to get a deposition him. where yeah. they were gonna talk to him and so, basically. So a day that. before that, he was like he's he made a joke about it. He was like, uh he's like, I only got one thing to say. You think could have hit me up earlier? <laughs> right, right. And so he 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 basically got mentored by Tony Robbins, the president. So I look at that and I'm like, of course rappers will come to me when they're at their lowest. Of course they will come to me when they realize the results they have are not what they want. And now they're stuck into a contract that requires them to be somebody they don't want to be every single day just to make very small pennies upon the money that they're actually worth. Damn. So they come and look at me and they realize like, like I'm not trying to be loud money. Mm. I'd much rather fall back in Diego. You don't ever see me. You, ever. If, if you ever Rarely. see me, it ain't Rarely. me. It ain't me sitting up here. You know, is that trying a to, book signing? Book signing. I make it. <laughs> make, I make it count. Is that lectures? I make it count. So, so, so I need to. I, I had to fall back, and, and yeah. when I realize a lot of these folks don't, it's not even so much that they're stuck. They don't want to let go of the fame. They don't want to let go of this because it's the that last ego. thing. That, the ego, and then also they feel like this is the last thing that they have that is actually like separating them from their high school class of people or it's their last thing they have that says that their life was a success but what they don't realize is that this is only a step towards it and it's also evidence that you're the shit mm. but a lot of folks don't look at it like that like you are the, you did this yeah and you can do it again right but some folks haven't hit rock bottom enough times to realize you that haven't truth. been broken i've you been have broken. To get broken i've been broken so many times that i i I looked up this last time and I was like, I'm a bad motherfucker. <laughs> I Just didn't like realize that, like it what before. Snoop said. He said, I want to thank me. I want to thank Snoop me. Dog, I looked you a up bad motherfucker. Because I was like, it's just my resiliency. It's just, it just, and that still came from a place of, 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 of weakness to a certain degree. But I had to look in the mirror and was like, you did that shit. And you did yeah. it again. Yep. And, and if something were to happen and you had to start from square one, would you be afraid? Fuck no. Nah. I know I, I've, I've tasted the bottom. I licked the pavement. I know what it tastes like. Let's go. Let's go do it again. So you there, got there that all, all that game. No, even now as a father, I thought right. that me being a father would make me more, uh, uh, you know, more afraid to take risk. I feel like I have to take the risk even more because he has to have a life that 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 makes even more sense for what he's going to take this to. My, my son's going to take this further than what I ever did. And Man. he may be intimidated by it at first, but he's going to realize like, Pops could have did a lot more had he realized the same things that I'm being taught at 12 and 13 and 10 at 9. He gonna know about all this game, all this stuff. He's gonna get showered with that, but in a way that it's not me imposing it on him. It's me helping him guide his way in a way that I know that I need it. And, and my father was amazing, but there was things that obviously he was still learning because I was his first child. So I want to bless my son with that. And uh, that's the most important thing to me now is that making sure that I'm, I'm aligning with legacy, making sure that anything that I do is with purpose, making sure I, you know, we can, we can kick it any day. We can, we can do all of that, but shit, we don't know what's, what, what tomorrow holds. Right. And I want what's mine. I right. want it because I, I, I know now, I know now it's not a facade. I know now that my words mean something. I know now that if I put it into, if I put it in the atmosphere, it's going to happen. And, right. it's, and it's happening right now, especially with Curtis King TV. So, um, it's it's. I feel I gotta, like I feel I'm like to just feel drop like this dub. When Bruce Lee said, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah," I appreciate it. When Bruce Lee said, "I'm being real though," no, nah, not, not to cut you off, not to cut you off, but I appreciate it. You are bringing something to the ecosystem mm -hmm. where people can get twenty for twenty dollars. Twenty dollars, yeah. I can have a million. Now, I'm not dollars, promising it's gonna always be like that. Trillion dollars. <laughs> How about this? All right, get in while it's early. Yeah, yeah. Get in while it's early. Get it while it's nah, early. but real yeah, talk, yeah. man. This is these are blessings. These are gems, bro. Yeah. And it's a bless that you're you're being obedient to your calling. Absolutely. With that, not Absolutely. only as a father, because right. you're leave you could you're gonna be able to leave this to your son. Even though Absolutely. we make jokes like, oh, he's gonna take the air and all that shit, whatever, like that. Right. But in all seriousness, mm -hmm. you have equity in your life. Even if my son, and I, I think this is where a lot of fathers before us, our generation, kind of got it wrong, is that. They hold on so much. This is the family business. We never sell our son. It's like, <laughs> if my son find a way to, to flip this shit <laughs> and I'm not here and he don't do it, Let's, I'll get out the grave and whoop him. Hello. Go, go flip that. I'm, I, the whole thing is that these things, 
we take ourselves so incredibly yeah. serious in everything that we do. And in all actuality, that's why like people are like, man, you shouldn't share your idea. Somebody's going to steal it. Fucking do it. Because chances are you're going to lose esteem for it because it wasn't your blessing to, to, to put into action. If you so, can't be used, you're useless. Kanye, that book. Yes, yes. I, I never forget. That's one of my favorite quotes. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> so, so I look at it. I'm like, I don't, I, don't, I don't fear the same things I used to fear. I fear the same things people are like, well, what if, what if it doesn't work? What if you go broke? Like, that's almost like saying, what if I stop trying? Just no, it doesn't exist. Like, I don't, I don't, I can't think of it like that only because I have been so used to doing this under anxiety. The yeah. biggest cheat code was getting rid of the, of that anxiety. I, got, I still got some anxiety, but it's good problems. Right. People who don't have problems at all are in a grave right now. Right. I want problems. I just want higher quality problems. So now you want some rich people problems? I want some rich people problems. <laughs> I want them problems. So, hey man, but look. I'll take that. On some real talk, bro. We've been we've been going for a minute, man. And I I know we could go here all day long. So yeah, 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 but yeah, on me. Before we go, I want you to talk about the book a little bit. We didn't even talk about the book, huh? We didn't yeah. even get to really go into the book. You can yeah. at least tell the people where they can get it. So Amazon, so you can actually go to musicproducerbook.com. Okay. Musicproducerbook.com. Uh it's gonna lead you to the Amazon link for this book. Uh, this book basically takes you through my journey from literally making beats on a PlayStation in my grandma's patio in Carson uh, through my IE years all the way to when I was able to grow CurtisKingBeats.com to a six-figure business uh, uh, within its first year. So Let's go. I want you to be able to walk through this journey and realize like this is not a book of highlights. This is a book of a lot more lowlights so that you realize, shit, if he made it, I know damn well I got it. So and that's the truth. So that you, as you read this, go through it. The audio book is available too for those who use the Apple books and all that stuff and Audible. It's available yeah. there. But um, this is definitely one of my most proudest pieces of uh I love of, of this cover, bro. Together, this man. cover they, is dope, bro. Yeah, they uh shout out to 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 uh Maurice, man, and um and No, you Maurice don't got ass cap and BMI. You really giving game oh, in yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, yeah, you really yeah, giving yeah, real yeah, game yeah, in yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean we gotta the thing is I like, like to buzz out the highlighter. It's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. It's, 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 it's more so autobiographical in terms of just giving you context in terms of what this actually looks like. But there are those tidbits where like every chapter in here is divided amongst like, like, okay, here, here go the chapter. Let me, let me just tell you the chapter really, really quick. Just a few For of sure, them. So, you you know. did. so I tried to separate this. First of all, the temple. Second chapter, the snare. Second chapter, the kick. The swing, the hi hats, the sample, the melody, the bass, the stru structure, of the beat, mix the beat, play the beat, share the beat, the producer Nora. I basically walk you through the beat making process, but I show you how every part of the beat making process is symbolic of another milestone within my life. And when you see how everything plays together, like you can go on here. You got a QR scanner on your yeah. phone? Can yeah. you pull that up real quick? Wait, I think I do. Maybe. Do you? Hold on. Let me if see. you do, if you if you got the phone, if not, I can pull mine's out. Hold on. Do I? If you don't, it's all good. I don't. Okay, it's all good. So basically, I got QR scanners in here, okay? And so if you're reading the book and I'm talking to you about a a, a, a beat battle that I had with my buddy, my, my, my brother, Captain, you can hit that QR scanner while you're reading it. No, you it. don't got it connected and y'all can go watch you can what you're talking that. about. You can, go watch the, you can go watch the battle after you read about it. So it's like, damn, that'd be crazy to watch. And then you hey, see the QR you know scanner the and you generation, go do that. Because niggas be wanting to fact Come check on, quick. They be like, like, this nigga didn't that do that shit. That wasn't even that crazy. He don't even know Murs. It, it's like, oh, he don't shit. even know who the fuck Murs is. So we got, we got <laughs> QR scanners throughout there. We even got like some of like my first beats that nobody has ever heard except for the people who have the book. So the QR scanners lead to these un these uh these uh unlisted private videos, and so. Uh, and where can they get this again? Musicproducerbook.com, but it's on it's on Amazon. It's on uh pretty much just go to Amazon. Amazon has it. Um, Musicproducerbook.com is gonna be the easiest thing to remember though. And also Curtis King TV. CurtisKingTV.com. And is these on? Is it in the Apple Store? Is it on iOS, Android? Oh no, no. In terms of app, no, it's not. And not, not in the App Store quite yet. But right okay. now, CurtisKingTV.com is accessible from the desktop and your okay. cell phone. Cool. So all of that stuff is. I can get it from Safari. That's yeah, not a problem. The fastest website I've, I've ever ever had. So um, I love that stat. Yeah, that's, oh, that's that's important. Because the mobile, like people, people were complaining the first week because they were clicking on the the menu bars and they were like. I click on the menu bars and it doesn't it doesn't go to the page. I said, "Have you scrolled down?" They said, "Oh my god, it's so fast." <laughs> I thought like it's like literally going through the pages on on a Nook or a okay. Kindle. So it was like boom boom. It's like oh shit, the whole lesson is here. So that's what I wanted to well, create. I got the with iPad, that. so I'm gonna oh, pull yeah, it you up. Want it, man, we yeah. we would love to have your energy in there because I know especially in these workshops, um, 
it's so many people in there that, that, I'm that have joined pull us, up man. And, pull up and do a, do a little yeah, live thing, man. man. But nah, Curtis, man, real talk, I appreciate you coming through, bro. Man, I appreciate you I hope, me. I hope people wrote some of these gems down. Yeah. You know, we said a lot of game. You kicked a lot of free game. Uh-huh. Absolutely. So we this was for free, y'all. <laughs> this is our, this was a favor. Now, nah, nah, this is my nigga, bro. He always do this. So always. y'all better always know. Um, go to CurtisKingTV.com. Yeah. Also, Amazon, get his book. Yeah. Um, um, for all your podcasts, productive culture, all your podcast needs, audio and visual, go to productiveculture.com backslash podcast. And how did you hear about a section? You can put in Big Cali World or All Goon Radio. Also, for all your recording needs, come out to Element Recording Studios in Pomona. Shout out my boy Cast One. Cast One, you've been hey. doing great with the music too. Yeah, the whole the music thing. Music is on point. Yeah, I hear you play it. I appreciate you. Also, Emron, thank you for the camera. You know what's up, man. And uh, yeah, thank you. Another my episode, brother. man. Appreciate Always. you, brother. Thank Honor. you, bro. Extra lit, extra lit.